This is the easiest Mesa build, and in this video we'll cover everything you need to know so you can do this. Now let's jump into the gunslinging action with Mesa. A frame that can easily eliminate entire rooms with her aimbot-like ability. We'll explore some of the most budget-friendly ways to build her. Whether you're conquering the star chart or running through steel path, I've got you covered. Now most Mesa builds typically need full loadouts to make them steel path viable. Usually requiring a ton of forma, archon shards, weapon arcanes like secondary outburst, and even specific mods on companions. But today our builds require none of those. And if you're someone that loves to see red numbers, don't worry, as I've got a trick for you to easily achieve that. So buckle up and I'll guide you through everything you need to know about Mesa, starting with her abilities. Ballistic Battery is Mesa's first ability. It allows her to accumulate damage to charge up a powerful single shot. The ability is pretty straightforward to use. Simply cast the ability to start charging its damage. Any damage dealt by guns, including your peacemakers, will charge up the ability. Once it's fully charged, activate the ability again to give your next shot extra damage. Among Mesa's abilities, Ballistic Battery is often considered the weakest as it does not scale well. It is usually replaced with a Helminth ability in most builds. Her next ability, however, is infinitely more useful, Shooting Gallery. Casting this ability summons a lasso that swirls around Mesa for a set duration. While active, the ability will jam the guns of three enemies nearby every 1.5 seconds. It also gives Mesa a small damage buff as well. This is Mesa's main crowd control ability, especially when paired with its augment, Muzzle Flash. The augment provides us with an AOE blind every six kills that Mesa gets. Crowd control abilities are particularly helpful in higher levels as they enhance our survivability. Speaking of which, Mesa's next ability also helps with that. Shatter Shield is Mesa's third ability. It provides her with a defensive buff that reduces the damage she takes from enemy gunfire by 80%. This value is affected by ability strength and can go up to a maximum of 95% damage reduction. But something less commonly known is that this ability protects us from projectile-based knockdowns. This includes grappling hooks from scorpions and infested ancients. However, knockdown caused by radial blasts from units such as heavy gunners will still bypass Shatter Shield. Shatter Shield also does not protect us from area damage or melee attacks. Last but not least, we have Mesa's signature ability, Peacemaker. Upon activation, Mesa draws her exalted pistols out. A circular targeting indicator then appears on your HUD. By holding the fire button, Mesa will shoot at random foes within the focal ring, up to 50 meters away. Ability range does not impact the 50 meter distance. With each shot fired, the focus ring progressively shrinks until it reaches its minimum size. While in Peacemaker, Mesa's energy will be constantly drained, and she will be unable to move around. However, the Augment mod allows her to walk around and roll during Peacemaker, which is a nice quality of life. That being said, some players, like myself, may choose not to utilize the Augment. For my playstyle, I prefer to execute a bullet jump, then cast the ability midair. This means I am consistently bullet jumping and recasting Peacemaker to reset the focus ring. To maximize the damage output with Peacemaker, it's crucial to understand that its damage primarily relies on the mods equipped on Mesa's exalted pistols, the regulators. Mesa, however, benefits from two inherent buffs with her Peacemaker. Firstly, there's an innate damage multiplier buff tied to Mesa's ability strength. This buff is additive to base damage mods like Hornet Strike. Consequently, it's advisable to avoid stacking base damage mods on the regulators since the ability strength already provides a substantial boost. Secondly, as Peacemaker is unleashed, it accumulates an additional damage bonus that peaks at 150%. This bonus rises incrementally with each burst and reaches its maximum potential at the 20th burst. It's important to note that this damage bonus resets to its initial value if Peacemaker expires or is deactivated. Therefore, to leverage this second buff effectively, a faster fire rate becomes instrumental. Arcanes such as Arcane Velocity, which enhances fire rate, play a significant role in optimizing Mesa's DPS. But hold on a minute. How exactly do we get those juicy red numbers? Firstly, we have to understand how critical tiers work. If you have 1% critical chance, you'll land yellow crits. 
jump to 101% and it's constant yellow crits with a 1% chance for orange. To unlock red crits, you'll need over 200% critical chance. But today's video, we're gonna be using a different method because frankly speaking, we don't have enough critical chance with our budget setup. Hehe. <laughs> so here's our unorthodox method of achieving red numbers. Instead of trying to hit tier three criticals, we can simply change the colors of all the tiers to red or whatever color your heart desires. You could even have green criticals if you wanted to. To change your damage colors, go to options in the menu page. Then using the search bar at the top, type in HUD colors. Using this, you'll be able to customize all your colors. So yeah, that's how we get red numbers. Please don't kill me for this. <laughs> Now let's dive into how to build Mesa. As promised, we'll explore builds for both Star Chart and Steel Path content. We'll kick things off with the Star Chart build because this is where I believe Mesa truly shines. Mesa effortlessly deletes enemies within a 50 meter radius without any elaborate setup. And that to me is what makes her one of the best Warframes for Star Chart content. This is the build we'll use for Star Chart. And I know what you're thinking. It does not have enough ability strength to kill. However, that's not the case as we're using Precision Intensify to give our fourth ability an extra 90% ability strength, which brings our total ability strength for regulators over 200%. Furthermore, Augur Secrets alone is enough for our Shatter Shield to achieve the maximum 95% damage reduction. Given that Mace's regulators consistently drain our energy, we prioritize maximum efficiency in this build. Corrosive Projection is interchangeable with any other Aura mod, regardless of polarity mismatch. For added convenience, Mesa's Waltz serves as a quality of life enhancement, allowing us to move during Peacemaker. However, feel free to substitute it with other Exilis mods, such as Vigilante Pursuit if desired. In the absence of adaptation, Vitality makes for a suitable substitute. For those without Precision Intensify, alternative ability strength mods can be used instead. The use of arcanes is entirely optional. Nevertheless, I highly recommend using arcane velocity for the reasons mentioned earlier in the video. Lastly, using the Xenuric Focus School is recommended for an additional energy boost. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go over how to mod her regulators. The setup we're using in this guide doesn't need any forma, and all the footage in the video is based on that setup. Before you copy it though, it's important to know which mods to change depending on what you're doing. The elemental mods you pick depend on the enemies you're facing. For the most part, corrosive works well for the majority situations, but if you're up against corpus, go for pure toxin. For the index, however, we're using radiation, as the enemies there have a lot more armor. Now for the steel path build, we're going to be stripping enemy armor with Mesa. Therefore, we'll go for viral on our regulators to delete armor stripped enemies. And for the reasons mentioned earlier in the video, we will not be using base damage mods such as Hornet Strike. If you don't have Galvanized Diffusion, feel free to use Barrel Diffusion as an alternative. Now you don't need a fully maxed out build and the build I've just shown you will work even for Steel Path. But if you're aiming for the best performance, then this is the one. If you're utilizing the Steel Path Mesa build, which I'll show shortly, then replace Primed Convulsion with Deep Freeze since we're focused on stripping enemy armor in that setup. So how do we strip armor reliably with Mesa? We'll use a Helminth ability to accomplish that. Now there are two versions of the Steel Path build. The first being with the more popular Helminth ability, Pillage. This build utilizes Pillage to strip enemy armor and shield gate for survival. I'm not a big fan of using Pillage, but if it's your cup of tea, this is the build. Pillage expands over time with duration, and as such, this build does not mod for range. And with this ability strength, we are able to fully strip enemy armor with two casts of Pillage. My main issue I have with the pillage build is that it does not have crowd control, and there were many times where I got drowned in enemy fire and died. A skill issue, I know. But that's why I prefer using the next build. Introducing Terrify. This is the Helminth ability gotten from Necros. And not only can it full strip enemies with a single cast, it even crowd controls them and makes them flee. The problem? Is that while enemies running away is good for survivability, it's not great if you want higher kills per minute. I have, however, found a solution to this problem. And while not game-breaking, enemies running away can get quite annoying after a while. Why are you running? Why are you running? And if you don't want that happening to you, 
We can solve it by using the Augment mod, Creeping Terrify. This lets us not only crowd control enemies and strip their armor, but also slow them down by 80%. This is the Zero Forma Terrify build we will be using. Corrosive projection is a requirement here, in order for us to full strip with a single cast of Terrify. If you're comfortable with shield gating, you can try swapping out adaptation for catalyzing shields and slotting two auger mods on your pistol. Now you might notice that Creeping Terrify is not in this build, and we can easily swap out the stretch mod for it. However, doing that would reduce our ability range by a fair bit. And what I would instead recommend is investing a Forma into the build so that we can replace Augur Reach with Creeping Terrify instead. The build works terrifically well from my time with it so far, and it's something I don't see used often. So if you're trying it out, do let me know your own experience with it down in the comments below. And if you're interested in a Zero Forma build that doesn't require Helminth abilities, then be sure to check this video out. Let's make the most of our Warframe arsenals without the Forma grind. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.